If the transmitting antenna on Wano were, were an isotropic lossless radiator, then the power density at, at u dot would be s at receiver, and I'll say for lossless isotropic antenna, and that would be equal to p t, the total power supplied at the input terminals. at the antenna on Ueno, and this would be at u dot. So we have pt over 4 pi r squared. So we're dividing the total power at the input terminals divided by the surface area of a sphere of radius r. But the transmitting antenna on Ueno is not isotropic and it's also not lossless. It has a gain of 18 dBi. Gain takes into account both the directionality as well as the losses, losses of the transmitter. Since we'll have both of our antennas pointing towards each other, hopefully, then the maximum gain of our transmitter will be directed towards the receiver on U dot. So this means we can write S in max direction, which will be towards, uh, towards the other antenna, at the receiver is S at the receiver for lossless isotropic antenna. That's basically this. I'm just putting this right here. This is at u dot. So we're taking the value that we just got for a lossless isotropic antenna, and I'm going to multiply that times gain, times the gain of the, of the transmitter at Wena. So this is what we're actually going to see at the receiver at u dot. So now we have the total power density in the vicinity of the receiver. So now let's see how much power is actually going to be received by the receiver. The receiving antenna is going to see the s value that we just calculated over its effective area. So then the total power intercepted by the receiving antenna is going to be P intercepted is going to be at u dot is S in the max direction. This is what we just calculated at receiver at distance R times the effective area of the receiver. This means we need to calculate the effective area of the receiving antenna. And that is lambda squared times the directivity of the receiver over 4 pi. Then the power intercepted by the receiving antenna, P intercepted, is and I'm going to plug in our equation that we have for this S max. So we have gain of the transmitter times PT, total power supplied to the, at the input terminals, over 4 pi r squared. And I'm going to put in this effective area, lambda squared d receiver over 4 pi. Since there may be losses in the receiving antenna, the intercepted power is, needs, needs to be scaled by the efficiency of the receiving antenna in order to yield the actual received power. So I'm going to call this P received, and that's going to be P intercepted, which we have right here, times the efficiency of the receiver. Now notice we have the efficiency of the receiver, and once we plug in this inter P intercepted value here, we're going to be multiplying that by the directivity of the receiver. So remember that the gain of the receiver is equal to the directivity of the receiver times the efficiency of the receiver. So that means I can replace this efficiency and the directivity once they're multiplied together, I can replace that with the gain of the receiver. So what I'm going to write here 
is lambda squared over 4 pi r squared. I'm putting all these out in front. And all we're left with is gain of the transmitter and then the gain of the receiver. Now we also have the total power at the transmitter, supplied to the transmitter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by the total power and that will give us now a ratio of the total received power relative to the total power supplied to the transmitter. Compare this equation that we just derived to an equation called the Friis transmission formula right here. You can see that they're identical. In other words, we can use this Friis transmission formula to calculate the total power received at the receiver from the total power supplied to a transmitting antenna. It takes into account the directivity and the losses of both antennas as well as the radial spreading of the propagating wave. So in other words, you don't have to go through all the steps that we just did to derive this equation. In the future, you can just go straight to the freeze transmission formula as long as you know what it is and what it accounts for and what it doesn't account for. Let's now use this freeze transmission formula to calculate the link budget from Buena to UDOT. First, we need the wavelength. The wavelength, which we might have already calculated, is 3 E8 over 2.4 gigahertz. So that is 0 0.125 meters. Now for the gain values, we can't just plug in dB values into this equation. We need to convert the gain values to linear values. So that means for 18 dBi of gain, we need to convert that, convert that to a linear value. So we're going to take 10 to the power of 18 divided by 10. So this is if we were going in the reverse direction, we would take 10 log base 10. So we're just doing that in reverse. And this is going to give us a value of 63, which is dimensionless. Putting all this together, we're going to get P received over PT is 63 times 63. 0.125 squared over 4 pi, and r here is 15 kilometers, so all of that is squared. And that's going to equal 1.74 times 10 to the minus 9, or about minus 87 dB. And now we can construct our total link budget for Ueno to the UDOT. We can start with 20 dBm for our transmitting power. There's 1.5 dB of cable loss. And then all this together, the gain and the path loss, is equal to our minus 87 dB that we just calculated. That takes into account the receiver and, and the antenna gains and the propagation losses. Then at the receiver, we're going to have minus 1.5 dB cable loss. So if we add all this together, plus 20 dBm, minus 1.5 dB, minus the 87 dB, and minus 1.5 dB at the receiver, we're going to get minus 70 dBm. That's the expected received signal value. Now if we compare this to the receiver sensitivity on UDOT, that's minus 82 dBm, we can see that we have a link margin of minus 72 dBm and minus minus 82 dBm, and that gives us a value of plus 10 dBm. So this link meets the requirement that the received signal for reliability needs to be at least 10 dB higher than the minimum sensitivity of the receiver. In other words, this is a viable link. Then what about the reverse direction from UDOT to Ueno? Everything is the same for the reverse direction except for the transmitting power, it's weaker, and the receiver sensitivity, it's more sensitive. 
So we're going to get plus 15 dBm, the transmitting power, minus 1.5 for the cable loss, minus 87 dB for the path loss, and, and also the antennas, and another 1.5 dB for the cable loss here at the receiver. So we're going to get minus 75 dBm. That's the expected received signal power level. So if we compare this to minus 89, the receiver sensitivity, we're going to get minus 75 dB and M. That should have an M on there. dBm minus a minus 89 dBm, and that's going to give us 14 dBm. So this is also a working link. Take out your in-class project notebooks and make a note about link budgets, the freeze transmission formula, and whether we have viable links from both Wayno to UDOT and UDOT to Wayno.